Alright, hey everybody, this is 22408 Aaron, and um, typically when I'm down in my basement making videos like this, it's usually about the fire alarm system. But unfortunately, since I'm not able to make fire alarm videos for a small amount of time, which in that fact, that reason is because of my brother did a, um, um, a competition at school and we still have with using the fire alarm panel and we still haven't put it back up yet. So I decided that maybe I should make videos about my access control system because I know a lot of people ask and I do make periodic updates. So I thought I would make periodic update videos so people would stop asking. So starting off with the uh, main panel itself. Oh, and of course I forgot to do this before I uh, made the video. I uh, needed to do a little bit of Ethernet rewiring. Let me get the camera to focus. I'm using a different camera, so I um, forgot to uh, redo the Ethernet. There's usually a port up there, but I took the port off, so it's just the keystone. But either way, uh, I actually redid the entire wiring for the pan the panel. I used to, when I uh, touched this, I would be scared of something coming out. Now I'm not really scared, and I also use these really nice spacers. I'm not completely sure why I didn't use them the first time. This is my box of Ethernet stuff. I kind of use this whole nut and bolt configuration. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know why I did that, because it didn't really work out. But now it works really well, and uh, I've also gotten a new uh, enclosure for it, which looks a lot nicer. So starting off here, I've got a standard reader, standard Wiegand reader. I had this, this is the first one I got, except this one I painted. This used to be that beige color, but I didn't really like that, so I painted it black, and it came out really nice. I really do like the way it came out. And um, I do have a strike plate for this door, and the reason why this is green is because I just keep it unlocked. I don't really see a reason to keep it locked. See? We have a Von Duprin strike plate. Alright, so if we go over here, this is the same as uh, last time as well, where I had a um, magnet on the door. As you can see, it's right here. See? This works out really well. So we're going to go outside and see what I did outside to this door. Now what I've done is I've gotten a new reader. I have it here. I, d I can't exactly remember if I had like the little reader that was mounted directly here, but I have it now in this box. That's so I can have all the wiring from this inside this box instead of it being right here. It's now just a single cable going in. And I also have replaced the um, button. There used to be some weird elevator button. Now it's a stop button that works really nicely for this thing. I may actually put a real push to exit button, but I haven't decided yet. I really like this one. And I've also added something new as well. It is a foot pedal. See? So if you're carrying something heavy, uh, you can just press the foot pedal. Really nice. And of all... Of all uh, God, I can't talk today. I've actually also added this audit trail screen right here. As you can see, this is just a Westinghouse 22-inch LCD monitor. This is actually the first flat panel monitor that we've owned, or that we've got. I don't have an official mount for it, so I kind of, so I kind of just made one using a bunch of, th using four through bolts and some wood, and it came out really well if you don't look at the back. But I think it came out really nice. There's a uh, thin client, um, Windows CE PC up there that I use for remote desktop connection, and I remote desktop into my server in my room, and I'd have it ran a single. Cat 5 cable that goes over that switch all the way over there. Because, of course, for Ethernet, and this does not have its built a built in wireless port, you know, which would make sense considering this is only a um, thin client, but it would certainly help. I think I would just use this with Ethernet, though, it's a lot more steady. But I didn't end there with this access control. I've actually come over here and I've added me a new reader to the shed. We have a new magnet, a new lock for the shed. Sorry, right, this is a uh, 
the standard uh, rated with pollen on it, except it has a numerical keypad, which works really nice. So first what we're going to do is we're going to scan my key fob to get in. So inside, this is my brother's fishing pole stuff. I'm going to try to move. That's not working really well. There we go. I'm sorry about that. I have a standard magnet, which I just got. It's really nice. It's very nice, very shiny. And it's even got a, um indicator lamp like the other one, except this one is frosted. It's not one of those stupid clear ones, which makes it look a lot better. There's the wire. Right here is a uh, push to exit button that I've used. And like the um, other one, this one isn't designed to be a push to exit button. I can't remember what it w at one point was. But it works really well. This is a Cutler Hammer. I don't know if you can see that. Is it going to focus on it? Probably not. Oh, there we go. Look, you can kind of see Cutler Hammer. I just have the wiring all neatly going down. And I have a... Uh, Scotch locks. I use a lot of Scotch locks in this the production of this whole thing to a sensor. And what that sensor is for is it'll keep the door unlocked if this door is open because there's really no point in locking it. So, as a matter of fact, let's demonstrate that. I'm going to put my keys back in my pocket. I'm going to pull this. I'm sure you could hear the relay if we do this. Now, and if we come over here, this remains green. Because why, what's the point of locking it if you're just, if it's not even gonna be secure? So, now it goes back and you can lock it. Now, let me demonstrate the keypad. I'm not completely sure if I uh, have this still the password, but let's see. Or at least I still do. It's a temporary 2580 password just by printing, pressing enter. It'll open. And it works really well. So you don't have to, because I know my parents come in here a lot and they don't want to have to um, have a key fob. They just enter the 2580, but that's not the real password. That's just a temporary password. There's a different password we use. And it all works out very well. So, if we come back in here, you can see that my face is shown up on the uh, audit trail. Let's see if it'll focus on that. There we go. And it instantly uh, shows up, which is really nice. But if we go on, now let's go to the software side of the program. This is a really nice software that I've I haven't given enough credit as I as it deserves. We are going to remote desktop into this computer. Because um I just keep all the uh, information. Oh, there's me. Hi. If we go to access control right here. I just keep all the access control information on my server so I can remote desktop and do it whenever I need to. So I don't have to keep updating the directory, which is not something I like doing. Because look at all these users I have. Like, I've uh, already pre-programmed all of the uh, blank key fobs and uh, cards I have. So, there's all, they already have their information on them. But I have pictures like this, unknown. And it doesn't let anybody in. So, let's say we want to add a new key, uh, key. As a matter of fact, let me get something out of my pocket. Out of my wallet, because I don't know if I have this. In case I do, let me just remove this. Because I have this, let me get it out of my wallet. It's a key. More of a card. What this is, this came out of my wallet. Oh, that's my grandmother's phone number. Let me put that in my phone myself. Keep forgetting to do so. Anyways, that's a bit out off topic. Here is a master access key card that I have that should be is usually always set up for master access key control. But I've deleted it so we can try adding it. 
See if we go here. We try to scan it. It probably won't let us in. And it says it right there. No privilege. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, there's actually a re really nice new feature. Not a new feature, just something I haven't realized yet. So we're just gonna out of the car, but we're gonna do this by pressing auto add door. And let's go to basement door. So it was already pre-selected. Now if we go over to the basement door. And uh, even if you scan this like three times, watch what it does. And this is a really useful feature. Notice how it just says, it just puts it once and then says this text above it. Let's see. Focus? Are you going to focus? It's not a very quick focuser as far as a camera. All right, you can kind of see it right there. The card number is, is, is existed, so it doesn't add it more than once, which is useful. So, we're going to add this, and then we're going to make the default department basement. Auto-add cards. You can do a multiples, so then it's going to show N before it. So, we're going to... Uh, let's first make it... Let's edit the privilege. So let's give it all the privileges because you know it's a master access key. And it uploads it successfully. So we're going to change all the information of uh, this and we're going to name it master access key one. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. And we're going to add a photo. Uh, we're going to do no pick. And we're going to OK it. And now. Now watch what happens. It updates immediately. Well, as you can see right there, this is what I mean by updates. It won't real-time update, but if anything happens, like a button's pressed, like watch this. I'm going to press it while aiming this at the... Uh, It still says that it's denied it because of no privilege, because it did. But um, it, just, it got the new picture that I've added. It added the name, which, it, well, actually, no, it didn't. Usually it's supposed to. So now, you heard the relay, meaning it actually did work. It shows right here. Master access key number one, and it shows the picture. And it looks really nice. It's up, It updates, which is really nice. Even if I do this... Let's say I change the picture of it. Watch how fast, it's, uh, like, it's really nice. You uh, go here. Let's change this picture of cheese I have. Because you know cheese is always the best. We're gonna, well, at first it'll focus. That would actually help, but it looks like it's not going to. So we're just gonna press okay. And it update. it's already updated in the um, database. So as soon as you press this or some activity happens, it changes all the cheese. <laughs> and it works out really, really good. Yeah, I personally have to give this, um, I mean, let's be realistic here. Let me change this back so it's not a picture of cheese. Um, I have to give this pro this uh, device, this access control system credit, to be brutally honest. I mean, out of all the things I've um, bought from China, is that a word, bought? I I'll use it as a word, but I'm because I'm sure people understand what I'm trying to say. Um, like, I'm sure everybody knows how stuff from China usually is very very cheap and all, but I don't know. I this is really really nice. I mean, it never gives me problems. The software, although, is in incredible English seems to do all its job perfectly well I mean it's the um this the, the physical and I saw the physical hardware components and everything is very universal and is very cheap I mean you can pretty much get anything and use it with this like 
This right over here. Let's see if I can find it. In this old junk hole. I don't think I'll be able to find it, unfortunately. But I have this swipe thing. This swipe key reader thing that you see at a lot of universities. It works perfectly fine with it. Oh, I wish I could show you. But ah, here it is right here. Right here. I'm sure people, anybody that goes to college knows what this is. That works perfectly fine. Um, if you take an HID reader, an official HID reader, even though they use encrypted keys, you could use their encrypted keys, it'll work just fine. I mean, this, it's limitless as to what this can do. And I, I never have problems with it. And it, it's cheap. I only paid 60 something dollars for this. So if any of you actually get this, which I, I, I personally highly recommend you getting this, but if you do, please let me know if you need any help. I'll gladly assist you, because I was having a little bit of trouble at first, but, I mean, it works really, really well. I'm very impressed with it, personally. And, you know, it's nothing, it's nothing you'd see at, like, the um, Federal, Re Federal Reserve, but... I mean, if you just want it, you know, to as a demonstration, or if you're controlling, like, you know, maybe one or two doors, or even up to four, because, you know, it's a four-door reader, this will work perfectly fine. And I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. Let's update that back to no picture. So, yeah, I guess that's just about it. I my, This camera limits me to 20 minutes, which is understandable, but, I mean, there's really nothing else to say. I mean, I love this. This uh, whole system, and I mean, the this audit trail thing I think is really cool. But, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to make more videos about this because, I, I mean, it's obvious that I'm the only one that makes these videos. I don't know why people, I, mean, I wonder why more people don't make more. I mean, because this is a fairly standard system, but I guess I'm not complaining. I guess I own, it's a kind of a monopoly, if you say. But uh, about that reader over there with the keypad, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking. I just want to say this before I end. That's made really, really well. I mean, like, let's say you go to... Uh, of course, I won't have it in that box. Well, if you look at one of these right over here, because I know I have one over here. Somewhere out there, it is right there. If you're thinking of access control, don't use one of these. I promise you, these are not... These are junk. These are quite literally junk. First off, the buttons are, like, I mean, come on. That does not scream quality at all. At all. I mean, like, the other one out there, you can see how fast you just beep, 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 beep. This one, you kind of have to, or else it won't even recognize. And half the time, like, it'll just freeze up and stop working. So, if you think of action control, don't buy one of these. I would never buy one of these ever again. I really, and that was only 12 bucks that went out there. And even though I did have to retrofit it, it, it works very well. So, Thank you very much for watching. I'm sure you're sick of me hearing my rant about the not the cheap stuff, but I like it. I like it a lot. So thank you very much for watching, and that will be it.